We'll get them. You stay with the car. I'm going in on my own. And that place? How are we going to find anything in that maze? Give me 15 minutes. Lucas! Crazy bastard! something you want. I want you, Geiger. Sounds like this cop's got some balls. But he ain't got no brains. Drop it! Right now! You want to join your partner? I always see a dead cop look better in Paris. Come on, let's get out of here. Tracy, do you know how this boy was when they found him? Do you know about the bites on his neck? I know. I saw it. Were there any wild dogs? Did you see any animals? It was no animal. It was a man. A man? He was a tall man. He stopped the boy from hurting me. And then I just took off. But before I did, I could see Tracy, what did you see? He had faith. Like My guest today is Dr. Leonard Pynchon, an animal behavior specialist whose recent work has focused on the migration pattern of North American bats. Dr. Pynchon, I understand that you have some surprising conclusions about the recent animal attack murders the police are studying? That's correct, Ms. Roberts. I've reviewed your local police department's pathology reports and studied photos of the curious bite marks on the necks of the victims. And you've concluded? Judging from the curvature of the entry wounds and the depth of penetration and the alarming loss of blood in each of the victims, I've concluded that these people were attacked by an immense specimen of Myotis lucifugus. Could you repeat that? A bat, a very large, very thirsty vampire bat. But, Doctor, I've never heard of bats attacking people. And in the middle of the city? I'm not trying to explain how it got here, Miss Roberts, but those wounds were made by a bat. I'd stake my reputation on it. All right. Dr. Pynchon, we're going to open our phone lines now. Do you have a question for our guest? Doc, I was watching this thing on cable last night about vampire playgirls. You think that's what this whole thing is? A case of bilbos and stags? That's enough. I didn't come here to be ridiculed. Those people were attacked by vampire bats. Before this is all over, you'll see I was right. Dr. Pynchon! Dr. Pynchon! Uh, uh, we'd like to thank Dr. Pynchon for stopping by and joining us today. And now here's an important message from our sponsor. I'd like to thank Ryan personally for those kind words. Have him here by midnight. My pleasure. But what about Lucas? I rather suspect when Ryan disappears, Officer Lucas may pay us a visit. By the way, have you seen Lisa tonight? Not all day. What do you suppose happened to her? It's that time. 
And I'm here to do your back. Where's Della? Right here, sugar. Perhaps there's more to her story than we imagined. What, about Lucas being a vampire? Can you imagine it, Raymond? A creature that feeds only on human life. Imagine it, Raymond. With an army of vampires, I could control the city, the country. Think of it, the ultimate power. And hey, Lisa got bit by Lucas. She might be one of those things now. Yes, we may already have the ammunition we need to destroy Lucas. Raymond, show our friend your new plaything. You're really gonna love this, I promise. It's showtime! Faking, Lucas. Bullets can't hurt you. Get up! Get up!
to the courageous actions of Vice Officer William Lucas, the crime spree of the notorious drug trafficker Hans Geiger has at last been laid to rest. Back to you, Don. Thank you, Melanie, for that exclusive report. In other news tonight, 14 Kmart shoppers are dead after a disgruntled video store employee opened fire during a midnight madness sale. The gunman identified police as Mark J. <laughs> Levine. Uh, Melanie, uh, uh, 